Unlike a penetration test, a vulnerability scan is simply going to passively look at all of the devices you have, run some very basic tests against them to determine where vulnerabilities might be. Things like port scans are very common vulnerability scans that you can do. They'll access or try to access certain ports in another machine, but they won't necessarily try to exploit anything that might be on that device. You can also try to identify systems this way and security devices. A number of these scans will identify where an IPS might be, where a router might be, and where a firewall might be. If you're planning on doing vulnerability scanning, you'll probably want to, of course, do your vulnerability scans inside of your environment, but also consider doing some from outside. That's where most of the bad guys live. So try to see what type of scanning you can do into your own environment. And of course, we want to gather as much information as possible. Your objective should be to scan as many systems as you can and try to get as much information back from all of those systems. Sometimes the information you get back may not be completely accurate, but we'll worry about that later. What we want to do is gather all of the details, and after we're done with the scans, we'll go through in a lot of detail to everything that we find to see exactly what may be real and what might not be real. Let's perform a scan on my network so I can give you a feel for what you might see if you were running a vulnerability scan anywhere else. I'm using Nessus. This is the home version of Nessus that I'm running in my home office. And I'm going to log in, and you get a blank screen here. I'm going to go through the process of performing a brand new scan. So I'm going to choose the Scans option. I'm going to add a scan, and I'm going to call this my home network scan. And I want to run it right now. And there are a number of scan policies that are already pre-configured in Nessus. And of course, you can customize this and create your own as well. Let's call this an internal network scan. And the targets that I'm going to scan is everything on my network. So I'm going to do a 192.168.1.0 slash 24. And that is everything that's out on my subnet. And I'm going to launch the scan. And you can see that it's going to go through the process of identifying and finding as many IP addresses as possible on my home network. This may take a little bit of time, a long amount of time. It depends on how many systems you have. It depends on how many tests you've asked the system to go through to be able to find. And you're probably going to have limitations on the system that you're doing the scanning with. It can only do so much at one time. And you can see the status as it goes through and finds all of those IP addresses. Let's have it finish its scan, and then let's drill down into the details to see what's there. Now that the scan is relatively complete, let's see what it's been able to find. I'm going to double click on this home network, and it lists for me all of the different devices that I have running currently or that this scan found on my home network. It shows me the host IP addresses, whether it's complete with its scan, the total number of vulnerabilities it found during the scan, and then it puts them into categories. High risk vulnerabilities, medium risk vulnerabilities, low risk, and places where ports were open on those individual devices. If we pick one and drill down, here's one that has a high vulnerability and a number of other mediums and lows. If we drill down, it shows us all of the different types of ports that were open on this device and the different vulnerabilities that it found on those open ports. And I can even choose some of these. These are some of the low vulnerability or the low risk vulnerabilities it found. Things like Microsoft Windows SMB login is possible on this device. It's telling us that this machine, I'm able to log in with a null session, a guest account, or some given credentials. And maybe that's not something we'd like. I've got a system on my home network that I have wide open right now. I can log in. I can share files from that machine without any type of password. And this scan was able to determine that and warn me that on this particular machine, there are a lot of instances where people can connect to this device and pull information back without any type of authentication whatsoever. Those are exactly the types of things we want to look out for and protect ourselves against, especially when the bad guys are running these same types of scans. As you can see, the scanner seems to look for everything. Of course, it's just looking for a set of signatures that it happens to know about. And that's why I've always tell you, make sure you have the latest signatures. Otherwise, you may miss 
being able to find certain things that may be susceptible on your systems. You can cross-reference these vulnerabilities online. There's the uh, National Vulnerability Database at nvd.nist.gov, and Microsoft has a number of security bulletins available that you can look at. That way you can tell if some of the things that you have found with your scanner match up to things that might actually be real. And you may want to try actively doing a penetration test against those to really see as a great double check. Sometimes you can't absolutely know that, but at least the scanner's telling you about it. And you're at least now able to perhaps try some of those ways to get into that system. If you get a false positive, that's not entirely unheard of with scanners. But it, it's just another way that you can try to find out every possible way the bad guy could get in. The scanners can really tell you a lot about these systems that you have. It may tell you that you have a lack of security controls. Maybe a firewall isn't turned on on that system. Maybe it's not running antivirus or anti-spyware. It might also point you to misconfigurations, like the machine we found was wide open. I didn't have any of the security settings set. I didn't have the guest account turned off. There may be completely open shares on that machine, and the scanner was very easily able to tell me that this machine was wide open for people. And of course, vulnerabilities, scanners will tell you exactly when it has found vulnerabilities that perhaps you didn't even know about. So if there is a brand new vulnerability uh, that is a Microsoft vulnerability, a flash vulnerability, a buffer overflow, these scanners will look for those types of openings and let you know that this particular machine might be susceptible to that risk and it's time to apply some patches. All because we were able to run these vulnerability scans to really get that high level view of exactly how our systems are set up and how susceptible they might be to these types of attacks.